six packs in a big bag of ice. The intro six packs in a big bag of ice. So guys, Bobby from New Jersey back for a quick video. This isn't the All Grain Primer Series uh, episode four that you were looking for, but um, I will be getting to that. In the meantime, I wanted to take a couple minutes um, to address a request by a fellow YouTube home brewer that I respect a lot, and um, his name is Tom Roeder. And he contacted me a couple months ago asking if I wanted to participate in this experiment that he was conducting and it was regarding uh, splitting a batch of common beer and fermenting it out with two different yeasts. And then the yeasts in question are actually going to be the dry USO5 Cali L, you know, equivalent versus the, um, the uh, Y yeast 1056 or it might be the White Labs equivalent. I didn't, uh, I didn't pay particular attention to that. We'll get that, I'm sure, from Tom after he sees all these videos. I know he's contacted a couple other guys. Um, but the basic premise is that he sent me two different beers and they're just marked A and B and I the only thing I know about these beers is that they're pale ales of some variety he did send me the recipe but I specifically you know didn't want to look at it I wanted to actually taste these beers before I uh, knew much about them I really do like the uh, the blind aspect of tasting uh, so I don't have any preconceptions about the beers uh, I know Tom actually uh, bottled these off the keg so uh, I didn't worry too much about sediment or uh, mixing these up or anything like that but both of them do have the, a similar hiss to them uh, we're going to just see how much carbonation was uh, actually retained and this side is the A sample and this side is the B don't lecture me on appropriate glassware these are just two nice uh, New Belgium uh, glasses that I have here that are similar I want to be able to look at them in exact glasses All right. probably a little bit of carbonation lost on that one you know they're both very similar in color and clarity I'm just going to call this uh, light amber to copper and they're both uh, equally carbonated I can see the the carbonation in there um, nice clarity through the haze but there's something funky going on with this one uh, there's a definite there's a huge difference in aroma here. Beer A actually has a little bit of a yeasty smell to it. There's actually a lot more fruit. You know, there's definitely more fruit in that one. This one right away has a pronounced uh, hop aroma to it, um, getting citrusy. This one doesn't have any apparent flaws in the aroma. I just get malt. I definitely get a malt in the background, but um, I'm getting citrusy hops on this one. It's relatively dry, um, but I might be perceiving dryness because of astringency or, or vice versa. You know, just I got a little bit of drying on the tongue. Now this beer, I can definitely verify that it's got it's got more malt and more hop nose than the other sample and. I can almost anticipate that this isn't going to be as dry as the other, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Yeah, that one definitely has a sense. Um, sample B definitely has <clears throat> a little more malt, aroma, and flavor. 
and it seems to be a little uh, more chewy, uh, a more substantial mouthfeel than sample A, so I don't think it's as dry. I mean, this is going to turn into a video of you watching me enjoy um, beer B. Uh, this is a really good version of this beer. <clears throat> now, I'm starting to sort of remember this aroma. Now, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm detecting a little bit of yeast autolization or dead yeast, autolyzed yeast, I think is the way to say that. Um, I'm trying to recall back to, you know, my Siebel kit tasting and things like that with the brew club and everything. And it's, it's not coming to me exactly what causes this. Um, a little bit off. I mean, very little, but I think it sort of took all of the uh, hop aroma away, and I'm not getting a lot of malt either, so it's sort of masking that, if anything. Now, B. Now, the perception I get on the aroma of this one is, is malt and hops at the same time. This aroma reminds me exactly like what it smells like when you're brewing a pale ale um, right after you throw the hops into the boil. I mean, you get real sticky sweet malt uh, in your face and really get that aroma from the hop addition. Um, I love the I love the way this smells. I like how beers um, that smell like this smell extremely fresh because it, you know as a brewer it reminds me of the brewing process and the boil. I don't know if uh, non-brewers really understand what that's like but um, it's almost like you know when you smell when you're first doughing in uh, an all-grain beer. But this is a really fresh smelling beer and it's got great balance in the aroma. Uh, the flavor mimics the aroma. I get a lot of malt support. It's a little fruity, um, but that's what I'd expect for a pale ale. And the hop I'm getting is citrusy and piney at the same time. You know, I'm, I'm getting um, uh, Cascade, Centennial, uh, Amarillo, a little bit of Amarillo, but uh, also Simcoe. I'm getting the pininess of a Simcoe. You know, they all sort of roll in the same crowd, so it could be any of those. But really, this is the, I would say, the clear winner between the two beers, for sure. I don't care which yeast this is. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I do care. I'm just saying... Um, without any preconceptions, I can clearly say that I would uh, I would buy beer B um, easily buy a sixer of this. Probably would skip on the beer A. If I had my first bottle, I'd skip the rest. This doesn't have um, any alcohol hotness whatsoever. Uh, it's extremely smooth. It's got great like moderate. Uh, I would say you know. Decent mouthfeel for a pale ale. I mean, I think it's on the upper range of where you'd want it to be, um, but definitely within style. Um, you know, firm bitterness in the background, but it's still maintaining a decent balance at the same time. And this one doesn't have the astringency characteristic that I'm getting from A.